Hey guys, uh, good evening and uh, welcome back. So today I will try to uh, discuss one of the uh, interview experience so which my friend has attended. So which is none other than uh, LTA Mindtree again. Uh, like you know the uh, requirement is for 2 to 4 years of experience. So it was posted on the Naukri portal. So he applied from there then he got a call from HR. So saying that uh, they do have an uh, face to face interview uh, on so and so date. So I don't remember the date but uh, so and so date it was mentioned so he went for the interview. So there were two technical rounds. So the first round is the beginning round so which was asked both uh, the Java and Selenium questions. So then the second round is much more detailed kind of an inter uh, detailed uh, technical again writing the code for uh, multiple programs. So the questions are really really interesting. So before going to uh, the discussion of the questions and the answers. So I would uh, request you to, if you like my content, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel guys. Uh, so that it will motivate me to come up with uh, more more uh, interesting videos for you guys. So with that uh, said, so let us uh, try to discuss uh, the questions. Okay, so the very first question in any of the interviews which will be asked is that uh, the introduction. So introduction is the first place where you can impress or get a first impression. Uh, so in the interview guys so please be be careful uh, while introducing yourself so uh, like you know briefly take two to three minutes of time and explain so and so like you know uh, i am so and so and uh, i am working in this organization on this kind of a projects and uh, this is the tech stack i am having and i am expertized in this kind of an areas uh, which is say for example healthcare or the finance or whatever it is so what are the tech stacks java selenium testing and etc and uh, what are all the modules that you have automated and uh, your subject matter expertise you can really really show up in that particular two to three minutes so after uh, being that said so the second question was uh, asked like you know can you please uh, explain me like you know uh, your project and uh, the automation experience so this is very very important when you are going for an interview uh, for automation interview so so in this case you can say something like like you know i'm uh, working on the automation project so where i i am involved in uh, uh, automating the test cases which are written uh, manually so could be functional uh, test cases could be regression test cases all the test cases we are automating it in the page object model uh, framework so so and so classes will be there so and so uh, uh, test classes will be there page classes will be there and utility classes will be there and uh, like you know uh, using the test runner or test xml we used to run the test cases and we will be pushing the code to the github from the github uh, we are like you know uh, integrating it to the jenkins job from jenkins job we are uh, triggering based on the cycles for the functional regression test cases will be executed every 24 hours and the functional test cases will be executed whenever we need it so like that you can uh, explain them uh, about your automation experience guys so then the third question asked was like you know what are the locators you used in your selenium so this is uh, the question which will be asked during the interviews to test your real time knowledge guys so the moment when we say locators all the locators will not be using in the daily basis so some of, I mean uh, majorly we are using is like uh, the xpaths and uh, the css selectors and few other locators so sometimes in uh, rare cases we'll be using uh, some of the uh, different locators say for example id name class name a uh, tag name link text and partial link text and uh, css selectors and xpath are the most uh, widely used uh, locators so it does not mean we cannot use them because the id we can use it but uh, it will be keep changing uh, whenever it is uh, required so dynamic when the page loads every time the id if id is getting changed so then there is no point of using it right so in those cases there will be limitation for them so that is the reason we will not be using it so we will be writing our own xpaths and we will be writing our own css selectors then we start using it so wherever the css selectors and xpath won't work so in that case we will be like you know uh, using the other locators so that is what it is so uh, after saying that uh, what are all the locators you usually use in the in your project you can explain the theory of the other locator things how do we use and when do we use and all so that is how we can uh, explore them so then comes uh, the very interesting uh, question like you know uh, the difference between the find element and find elements so the find element is basically for the single web element so the find elements uh, is for the multiple web elements so if i am uh, i mean if i am thinking to interact with single web element 
then i'll go with driver dot find element so if i want to uh, interact with multiple web elements so then uh, it will be like you know driver dot find element so it will basically return multiple web elements so you can iterate it and you can uh, interact with uh, the required web element that you want to so one uh, real use case is like say for example if you want to click on the login button so that is uh, ab absolute, I mean, obviously you have to go with the driver dot find element. So if you want to re uh, uh, interact with the drop down values, then you have to go with the driver dot find elements. So drop down values will be many. So you have to find the driver dot web elements. So that will return multiple web elements. So then comes uh, what is XPath and its types. So the XPath is like basically an XML path language. So where we can write a query to identify. Uh, the web elements so there are two types of xpaths one is absolute xpath one is a relative xpath so the absolute xpath is uh, the thing which starts from the node and uh, till the point where you reach uh, so it will uh, uh, start from there to ending point so which is not reliable and which will not be used in the real time project uh, often so the relative xpath is the one which will be used often in the real time industry so which will be like you know start from any node it can be start from any node but the absolute will start from the root it will start from the node so that is the difference and this can be reliable and we do have multiple uh, features uh, in the relative xpath saying that contains and uh, starts with text and uh, many other things so which will be uh, used based on the context as well so the next question is like you know brief explanation about your framework so again uh, i might have explained in the uh, previously also so that uh, i mean the when it comes to the framework you have to be more specific guys so you have to tell uh, what are your page classes where do you keep your page classes what do you write in the page classes and then what is the test classes what do you write in the test classes where do you keep keep the test classes and what is utility classes and what do you keep in utility classes and where do you use those utility classes and what is testng.xml file and what what will what it contains and what it will be used for so all those things what is pom.xml file uh, why that will be uh, used in your framework and what is the importance of pom.xml file so you have to go through one by one and uh, you have to explain them for example base class will be like you know handling the driver and the tear down uh, uh, activities and the page classes will be used for the locators and actions and test classes will be used for uh, writing the logic and uh, writing the assertions so utilities will be used for the common classes common utility uh, methods which will be used uh, to use all across the uh, framework so then comes testng.xml uh, is to execute the um, test cases and the pom.xml is an art of the project where we maintain all the dependencies and uh, uh, we can add whatever the dependency we want for the for our uh, framework and we can uh, using it and also when it comes to execution from jenkins and all the pom.xml file will be referred okay so then comes uh, oops concept used in your framework guys so i made a separate video on the oops concepts used in your framework so please do watch that so it is there in the playlist as well so i'll briefly explain them as well uh, where interfaces will be used so interfaces will be used in our framework where the base classes will be there base classes will be keeping the driver uh, I, activities and that will be made as a parent class and all the base classes will be the child classes and we will be inheriting it so extend base class and uh, start using the driver things so to initialize the web driver in all the classes so then comes encapsulation all the page classes we are declaring the web element right so we will be making them as private so that the uh, outside of the class those web elements cannot be accessed so that is the reason all the web elements will be made as uh, 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 private so okay so then comes the polymorphism polymorphism as the name suggests the one method name so multiple behaviors so the login page is the best example login with username and password uh, the login with uh, the single sign on like google microsoft and all so interface interface web driver itself is an interface and apart from that also we can uh, whenever we need a utility and uh, we can we can make an inter interface is a larger concept guys right? so uh, whenever we need it so to define the rules uh, some set of rules we can define one interface and we can start using the interface as well so what is the static keyword uh, in uh, java this is very very important question so the static is the place uh, static is the keyword which makes the method uh, 
can be accessed from anywhere regardless of the object creation so the moment when you use the static keyword so you can you don't need to create an object so it will be shared all across the uh, framework so you can start using it by using the class name reference class name dot that particular method that will solve the problem and uh, we'll be using most of the times the static methods will be used uh, for i mean static keyword will be used for the uh, utility methods common utility methods guys so then comes uh, the difference between final finally and finalize so the final keyword will be used to make the class variable and method as a immutable so nobody can change the value and nobody can uh, override it and nobody can inherit the class so the finally will be used in the try catch block uh, context so when the try catch block try executes uh, try did not execute then the catch will i mean try executes the catch will catch the exception and if you do any sort of a cleanup so then finally will always get executed catch back will be optionally but the finally block will always get executed and uh, the finalize keyword will be used uh, uh for, i mean the garbage collector will uh, call this finalize method before destroying the object okay so then quickly like you know let us go to this is this was the first round questions so he uh, explained well and he wrote it all the experts and all well so he cleared the first round so then uh, he was attended for the second round so the second round is all about the programmatical things so the very first question was like you know reverse string without using the uh, default methods so which will be a very uh, basic question so you have to like you know uh, read the characters from the end of the string then you have to concatenate it in the new variable then you have to print it so that is as simple as that so then comes uh, they have given one uh, real time application so for them for that uh, he was asked to write the find the child and parent element uh, in that particular website could be any e-commerce website could be any uh, booking applications and all so it was for make my trip so he was asked to write the find the child and relationship for the elements so uh, he has written that so that can be uh, used it so what is constructor so that was the question so the constructor uh, is like you know uh, to initialize the uh, object of that particular class we will we'll be using the constructor so the constructor will be having the same name as the class name and constructor will not return any any, any type even the void also it will not return so the constructor will uh, be used to initialize the object of that particular class so we can always like you know we use the constructor to initialize the uh, variables also so what is this keyword in java so this keyword is to uh, refer the current class objects and uh, variables so the moment when we use so when the two variables are there in the parent class and the child class so same name in that case this dot uh, the variable name refers to the current class variable name it does not uh, refers to the parent class so that is the meaning okay so then uh, the write a program for an to find the anagram so anagram is basically uh, to check there will be two strings so which contains the same characters or not so you can take any two strings and convert it into the character array then sort it so then uh, compare it array start equals method is there so pass the two uh, sorted arrays so that will uh, give you uh, true or false so if it is true so then it is an anagram if it is false then no not an anagram okay so then one more question was asked like uh, read the data from the excel so for that uh, you have to write an excel utility like uh, you have to uh, take the excel which is the file input stream input stream and access of workbook access of workbook of that particular file of the file input stream so then you have to get the sheet and then you have to iterate through each and every row and get the cell value so then return the value so that's it guys so he has cleared both the rounds but uh, uh, then he was moved to the hr round but he did not join the LTM entry because he was having some other offer so uh, other interesting offer he had so that is the reason he did not join the LTM entry so overall the interview questions was asked during the LTM entry uh, was these are all the questions so i'll put these questions in the description box as well so if you want so you can go through it guys so thank you thank you so very much for watching if you like my content please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel guys thank you thank you so very much